everyone, it's Pat with Seattle Coffee Gear and I am here today to give you a crew comparison of the Philips 4300, which is the new entry to the Philips Super Auto line and the 3200, which is one of the existing machines in the line. Today we're looking at the Panarello versions of each of these machines. They also both come in a Latte Go version, which offers automatic milk steaming, uh, which is um, gonna give you uh, easier time with your milk, but also you get a little bit more control with these Pandarello versions. So if you just take a look at them, they look very similar in terms of profile. They're pretty much the same size. They both have these top loading hoppers, front loading water tanks. They have the same drip trays and the same uh, passive cup warmers on the top. And the Panarello ones are very similar on them. But really what it comes down to and what sets them apart is the interface options that you're going to see on the front of the machine. Uh, on the 3200, you've got the pretty standard Philips Super Auto line kind of light up buttons here. And those are going to give you your drink options. And then you do have some control on the left side here for things like temperature and volume and dose, but you are kind of just getting a feel for these different functions on the machine. Whereas with the 4300, you've got a screen down here that's going to give you uh, fine control over the different parameters of your drink options, and you're going to get more feedback as to what those controls actually mean. The other thing that you're going to get with the 4300 screen is more in-depth cleaning instructions. So whereas with this machine, it's going to give you your light up notifications that you need to do things like change the filter and descale or clean. And then you're going to refer to your manual to understand the process for that and work through it uh, that way. Whereas on this machine, you're going to get more step-by-step -step instructions for things like replacing your water filter. And you can also just quickly select in the settings menu to, or in the clean menu to do like a quick rinse or uh, clean the brood unit, which is really nice. Um, you're also going to have more uh, settings options in here in general. And when you have errors with the machine, instead of just combinations of lights that you have to look up in your manual or online to understand, you're gonna get more thorough uh, error code information on the screen with this machine. Sometimes that's going to help you to just fix the problem yourself. And other times it's going to be something that uh, technicians that you talk to can use to walk you through issues if those things do come up. The actual drinks that these machines can make are pretty comparable. You might see some differences like the Cafe Crema versus the uh, Lungo uh, espresso option on the 3200. They're pretty close approximations of one another. The coffee function is very similar. So, and they both can make their Americanos. So um, when it comes to the actual capabilities of what the machines can make, they're very similar. It's all about the interface on the 4300 and how it makes all of this stuff a lot easier. Um, one thing that I really appreciate with the 4300 is the Panarello works the same as it does on the 3200, but after you're done using it, the 4300 screen reminds you to take apart the assembly and clean it, which is really important because if you don't do that after every use, you can end up with milk backed up in the wand and it can get really gross really fast and uh, nobody wants that. So another thing that the screen lets you do is have uh, separate profiles. So you get a blue profile, a green profile, and a guest profile on the 4300. The blue and green profiles, once you sort of dial in your recipe for the different drink options, it saves it to that profile. So the next time that you hit an espresso or an Americano, your volume and dose settings and the like are all saved uh, so that you don't have to input them every time. So you can dial in your favorite drink and then you're good to go. Whereas on the 3200, um, it remembers some of those settings, but you have to change them every time if you're different users and want different, have different preferences. So the 4300 is definitely better if you are not the only user of the machine. The other thing too with the steaming systems is the 4300 has this kind of flip dial here that goes back and forth. Um, it actually does something to the steam. Uh, it just introduces a different, it makes it seem a little bit drier so that when you're using a the cappuccino setting or the more foam setting, you get a drier foam that is more akin to what you get in a cappuccino, which is pretty cool. Uh, this machine doesn't have the same degree of functionality. You can kind of finesse drier foam is, with practice on the 3200, but it's cool that the 4300 has that little nozzle that can adjust the, the uh, steam amount for lattes and cappuccinos accordingly. 
Another big thing that I noticed with these machines, and I don't have the specifics on why this is, but the 4300 to me just sounds better than the 3200. The 3200 isn't obnoxious, but it has a kind of higher pitched grinder, whereas the 4300 to me has a kind of um, a little more rumbly tone. And then when it goes through its rinsing cycles and brewing cycles, I just think the 4300 sounds a little bit more insulated, a little bit deeper, as opposed to the kind of higher pitch sound of the 3200. It's important to note that that's gonna, they're gonna sound different to every person. So it could just be a me thing, but I think it's worth mentioning because I do like the way that the 4300 sounds a little bit more. And so really what it comes down to for me is price point versus how much you value the interface options on the 4300. Uh, the 3200 is still a solid machine that can do, again, pretty much everything the 4300 can if you learn the specifics and the quirks of the menu. But the 4300 is just a much more um, a much more transparent machine that gives you better feedback because it has that screen option. And then it has those profiles to save drinks. So a lot of it is convenience, creature comforts that you get from the upgrade to the 4300. But in either case, they're both really affordable machines. So um, I really like them both. So let's pull a couple of shots on these two machines to get a feel for the way that the interface changes the workflow. Um, we'll start with the 3200. I'm going to hit the espresso button here and you'll see I've got my, uh, my coffee choice options up here so I can change the dose level or the volume amounts. And we don't get a ton of feedback as to what these different levels give you in this menu. Um, and then you can hit the button again if you wanna do a double or single. So um, as you'll see, these are similar options to what you get on the 4300, but with a little bit less feedback. I'm gonna hit play here. You can hear a little bit of that higher pitch in the grinder. Okay, so we've got our shot from the 3200 and you can hear it working through, it's uh, ejecting the puck. So let's hop over to the 4300 and take a look at what the interface does for this kind of drink preparation here. So I'm gonna hit espresso here and instead of just the buttons that you're hitting over there, we've got these three options that I can tab through. We're gonna get more, let's see, we've got the bypass doser option and then one, two, three, four, five different levels of dose or strength. You can kind of think of it that way. And then same for the, uh, for the volume here, we've got one ounce and then we can click all the way through to three ounces of, for the single shot. And then from there we can select if we want a single or a double. So you're getting similar options here. The temperature option is something you can set in the settings. So you do have control over that. On this machine, it does just go from low, medium, and high. Part of that is because it's so hard to guarantee a specific numbered temperature. So um, as the water moves from the boiler through the brew group and into your cup, it's gonna change temperature quite a bit. So they use low, medium, and high settings just so that it's a little bit more, um, it accounts a little bit more for the range that can kind of end up happening there. But you do get that setting, you just set it in the settings menu instead of on the uh, drink preparation menu. So we're gonna do 1.9 ounces here. This looks good. So I'm gonna hit the play button here. As you can see, it tells me that the uh, recipe is stored. You get this, I hear it as a slightly lower tone for the grinder. And then we've also got this progress bar for the brewing too, so that you don't uh, stand there wondering if it's working or not, it's, it's going through the process. Like I was saying earlier, I like the tone a little bit more of the, the 
uh, pump as it pushes the water through as well. So there you have it. That's the two different workflow styles between the two machines. Uh, as you can see, they are capable of pretty similar things in terms of the drinks that they can produce, but you just get more feedback and transparency on this one. And having those profiles to save your recipes is really nice because you don't have to recreate them every time. You don't have to remember them every time. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Uh, make sure to throw a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Drop any questions you have about these machines in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can get all of the other videos that we've got coming for the 4300, including the uh, crew review that we did and the Latte Go version and some of the content that we have around that. Thanks. Okay. Yes.